reading. What makes someone a good reader is not that they can read quickly, it's that they can comprehend and remember what they read. Now, I read three books every single week. A matter of fact, I block out Monday through Saturday. Gotta rest on Sunday. <laughs> but Monday through Saturday, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. So that's 12 hours every week just to read. But what impresses people more than the fact that I'm reading these three books every week is that I can comprehend and remember what I read. Now, this makes sense because the average reader comprehends as well as remembers less than half of what they read. And I get this because I used to be that reader. I'd pick up a book, I'd read it, I'd move on to the next, not even remembering the title or the author of the previous book. But I was able to change just six things about how I read that has boosted up my comprehension. And I wanna share them with you. So here are the steps. So first, you come over to your book. You put, take your book off the bookshelf, and then you gotta feel it, then you gotta caress it. No, no, all right, here's what you do. The first thing that you do is you look for the table of contents. Now, this is the reason why you look for the table of contents and you read them. The reason why is because most people never even read this, but this gives you a roadmap. This is like the author's North Star. You know where the author is going. And then you'll start reading the book, right? But you're not just reading the book. You know what you're doing here is you're looking for key pieces of arguments that the author is using to support whatever they're suggesting in the book. So what I've done here is I've underlined everything that I think the author is using to support, right, what they're trying to argue for. And then what I'll do is I'll write down in the margin certain notes. It could be an idea that the author has sparked for me. It could be a book suggestion that's come from the author. It could not be me saying, I think this author is a little crazy here, right? Whatever it may be, I'll write down those notes. Then I'll circle words or phrases. These are things I don't understand. It's important to understand things you don't understand, right? So I'll circle those and then I'll immediately look those up. Now, a very, very important point here is that once you get to the end of the chapter, you write a summary, or at least that's what I do. I'll write a two to three sentence summary in my own words of what I think the, 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 the chapter is about. Now this gives you a higher level of comprehension because you'll be able to go back and you'll see this in a second. So now, after you have done that for every single chapter, so that means that you have underlined key supporting evidence, you have written in the margins only where you feel like you have to take notes, you've circled words that you don't understand, and you've also summarized every chapter in two to three sentences, which by the way, this only adds about 10 to 15 minutes more work, so it's not a lot more work. But after you've done all of that, you're now finished with the first five steps. You're now finished with the book, okay? You'll now take the book, you'll put the book on the bookshelf, and then whoosh, you walk away for at least a week. Then a week later, whoosh, you come back, fresh eyes. You now go back to the book. This is the magic. This is step six, and a lot of people never, ever, ever, ever do this. So now you go back to the book, and you go back to the chapters. Now, when I say you go back to the chapters, is you go back to the end of every chapter. Let me see if I can find the end of my chapter. I can't even find the end of my chapter here. Let's see here. Let's see. Maybe I should use the table of contents. All right. So you go back to the end of the chapter and you'll look for the two to three sentences that you use to summarize the chapter. Then you'll read that and then you'll reverse engineer it. Then you'll go back through that chapter looking for where you've underlined to support what you wrote. Then you'll also go back and you'll look for the words that you circled. And you'll look for the words that, that you've, uh, that you, that, where you've written notes in the, in the margins. So words that you've circled, you'll go back and you'll kind of test yourself. Do I remember those? The notes, you go back and you say, oh, yeah, see, the author really was crazy. And I still think the author's crazy. Whatever it may be, you go back and do that review. The beauty of the review is it's in the review where the content in the book cements to your mind. Now, it takes me, it took me, actually, this book is about 230 pages. It took me about four hours to read the book but it only took 30 minutes to do the review. But now, there's even another higher level of bonus if you really wanna comprehend. So if you do all those things, your comprehension is gonna be high. It'll probably be 70, 80% of what you're reading, which by the way, the average comprehension is less than 50%. So that's gonna be a good thing for you. But if you wanna take it to the next level, here's what you do. And I learned this while preparing for my Knowledge Share Mentoring Program. And here's what I learned. What I learned is that the most efficient or even effective way to read for comprehension in a book is once you're done with those six steps, you then take out your journal or your computer 
and you then write down the three main points. Now, what are main points? This would be if someone were to ask you, well, what's this book about? You would think back to your chapter summaries. So in your words, how would you describe what the book is about in three main points? Then you move on to three big ideas. Where do you get the big ideas? You go back to where you've been underlining, right? The supporting evidence, that's where the ideas are. And you'll write down just three, three big ideas, innovative ideas. These could be tools or resources or strategies. You write all of that down. And guess what? That's it. You write that down, three big ideas, three main points. You do those six steps. And I guarantee you, your comprehension is going to fly through the roof. I did this. My comprehension and my ability to remember went up. And by doing that, I'm telling you, my life changed. And if you use these strategies, I believe your life will change as well.